Well, with the kickoff to summer already upon us next weekend, Memorial Day. Can you believe it's time to get your grill on? Cindy Dole here, Home Wizards and Consumer Reports helps us every year with their unique and exclusive and very thorough grill ratings review. What is new in the grill land? How do you shop best? What about those BTUs? And what do you get in a Margaritaville grill anyway? Well, I talked with Celia Cooper Schmidt Lehrman, the deputy home editor at Consumer Reports, to get all the scoop. Well, hi, Celia. Hi there. So Consumer Reports, I always love your uh, grill reviews and this year's Deals and Duds. You've got some new ones and uh, some classic principles that I, I think never really change. And so I'm looking forward to kind of getting into all of it. Um, as First of all, as many of us are spending more time going to the grocery store and cooking at home, did you guys at Consumer Reports find that grilling is something that we're doing more often? Well, we also, we, yes, we did find that people are grilling more often. They're also grilling and they're entertaining at home more often. And what's interesting is people are getting more adventurous as they cook. They're cooking more foods on their grills, which is something that, you know, we found in, in our surveys and also industry has found in their surveys. So it, that's actually shaped our testing and also shaped our scoring for the models. And that's why I guess I understand you expanded your ratings to what's called the indirect grill, this whole new trend of slow cooking meats and things like that? That's right. And we also um, put more emphasis in the overall score on low temperature cooking because the whole idea being you, if you're cooking uh, foods besides sort of the steaks and burgers and hot dogs, you want to be sure that your grill isn't going to actually burn them or dry them out. Mm-hmm. So we put a little bit more emphasis on that. And we also added a scoring metric for indirect cooking, since more and more people are doing that on their grills. Thank God you get to say metrics. <laughs> <laughs> Not matrix, but little metrics, I know. So, all right, so explain for everyone, if they haven't heard before, how just the, the science of doing this and how much uh, how much meat and chicken and grilling and testing is involved just to, to get a sense of um, what's out there and what we should buy or not buy. Well, we actually spent more than 590 hours testing the grills, so really almost 600 hours testing grills, uh, about 540 steaks that we seared, and about 90 pounds of chicken that we cooked. We also cooked, you know, probably a similar amount of fish Hmm. on the grills. And no one else is doing this, right? Not that we know of, not the way that we are. You know, because we always go out and we're buying the grills the way consumers buy the grills. We buy them at retail and we pay for them ourselves. So we have a very similar experience to what the consumers do when they purchase a grill. So when you're buying these grills, do the stores know that you're that they're about to be tested, that they're <laughs> or that the brands are going to be tested and scrutinized? I hope not. I yeah. mean, that's the whole idea. Is we try to we have shoppers through a network of secret shoppers throughout the country. How fun! Interesting. So. Has the grill really changed? I mean, and is there a different focus for 2011 besides some of these features, or is it still the main mechanism, the same way that it works, and, and, you know, good is always good and bad is always bad? Well, you know, it's really interesting because I think there are a lot more bells and whistles on grills these days than there were about 10 years ago or maybe even five years ago. But it really, you know, comes also still comes down to how well the grill cooks, how well, how even is it across the surface, and how well does it cook at high heat and low heat. So some of those sort of basics, if it doesn't have the basics down, it really doesn't matter if it has the bells and whistles. So I think, you know, you sort of have to balance the two, how many bells and whistles do you want, how many will you need? I mean, there's certain features that will actually make your life easier and will help improve the cooking, and some that are just sort of, you know, extra. Kind of laughable in some cases, right? I mean, what's this Margaritaville thing, Margaritaville G1000? Well, what that is <laughs> is actually a, and we're calling it a transportable grill, because it's actually pretty heavy and it's pretty large, for um, for what is quote unquote a portable grill, but it's not portable in the traditional sense in terms of the fact that you could sort of lift it up and carry it from place to place. It's portable in the fact that you attach it with a two inch receiver hitch to your car, and then you can take the grill with you, you know, for tailgating or to the beach or anywhere you want. And what you end up having is is basically a a full sized grill 
that gets attached to the back of your car, and you can take it with you. And like you a boat? You mean you're driving down the street with this grill? Yeah, and we actually oh, took it out on the road oh, no. to make sure that, you know, it would sort of, you know, not uh, sort of, uh, it would actually stay put yeah? when, you, when you put it up next to your car and uh, that it wouldn't also affect the car itself. And we found it was fine. So no runaways or anything. No like. runaways. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about first the the standout brands because I know that as always too, the ones that are the most expensive are not always the best, and that's kind of the the philosophy that rule that rules no matter what you guys are testing. And the the cheapest isn't always the best. It's always kind of something in between. Yeah, it really is something in between. And and one of the things we also found out this time around is that you really can't go by brand name. Because, you know, we test all of the big brands as well as some of the smaller brands. And some, somebody like Weber, the Weber Genesis series of grills, did very well in our ratings. But the Summit series, not so hot. So, you know, we, same thing happened with Charbroil. Some of the Charbroil red grills did very well. And some of the others, the Charbroil commercials, not so well. And we found the same thing with Kenmore grills. So really, it's it's um, you can't just shop by brand name alone, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So what do you shop by? I think you want to shop by um, features, mm-hmm. and there are certain features that are really um, almost things that you would say we would say almost are a must. Um, something like an electronic igniter that works better than push button or rotary ones because they tend to be more reliable. You know, and there's nothing worse than turning on your grill and it doesn't go on. I mean, that's that's really a hassle. And then you've got to pull out the matches or the propane stick, and and, and you know that that's a, that's an annoyance, and it's not really the way you want to start your grill. So um, something like that is, I think, very very important. The grates, the grates you actually cook the food on, is also very important. Stainless steel and coated cast iron grates keep the grilling temperatures more consistent and tend to sear well. So those are something you really want to look for. And then you also want to look at the size of your grill. I mean, you want to match the size, the cooking surface area to the people, the number of people you generally cook for. And so when you're shopping, you want to also, you know, look, because a lot of the displays will say it has X number of square inches on it. And what they do is they measure the square inches of everything. You know, if there are any side burners, if there's a warming rack, that's usually all included in, in what the manufacturers put in their, their uh, display literature. Whereas when we do it, we just measure it by the cooking surface because we found some grills that are physically very large, but they actually have pretty small cooking surfaces because they've got a lot of side tables or they'll have a side burner that you can only use for searing which is nice, but, but somewhat limited. So we don't want to include those types of things in the overall cooking um, area of the grill because they are sort of auxiliary. Mm-hmm. And the good old BTU philosophy is also the same. Forget about that, right? Yeah, I really no need to obsess about that. It doesn't really guarantee. More BTUs don't guarantee faster preheating or better searing in our tests. Another thing that really didn't matter as much, um, infrared burners and infrared technology. You know, sometimes we didn't find that to be any better than standard burners in our tests. So if you find one that you like, you know, some of our highly rated ones do have infrared burners. Some of them don't. It's really also not a must. So what about some of the, the summertime deals? I mean, here it is. We're in the peak of, of really getting into uh, more and more outdoor grilling. What would you advise uh, consumers think about in terms of timing? Where do they go to get the deal? And, 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 of course, I'm guessing we can still negotiate for a better deal somehow. Sure. I think you still can negotiate for a better deal. I think these days um, you can use the Internet to actually, uh, when you find a grill that you like, you can start shop around on the internet to see where the best deals are, um, so that you know we you can you can find the best deal for the grill that you like. But one of the things we also do suggest you do is actually go into the store to to sort of see the grills. And we say that because you really want to be able to kind of kick the tires a little bit on the grills. You want to be able to um, sort of gently nudge them to see how sturdy they seem. You also want to do a simple hand test 
which is you take, put your hand on the handle for the lid, and you want to see how close the knuck, your knuckles get to the actual metal of the lid. Because if, if that's going to be very close, you could burn yourself when you're opening and closing the grill. Do you know what also happens with a grill, um, probably more so than with just a conventional cooktop or oven, is that you also have to pay attention to the maintenance mm-hmm. of the grill. You know, you, you have to be sure that the, the burners are, that you've, that you've cleaned the grates after, the, after you've enjoyed your last, burger on the on the grill and you also want to be sure that you're doing things like emptying the grease pan on a regular basis because if you let the grease build up you can get more flare-ups when you're cooking and the flare-ups can burn the food so make sure you get the full report it's out on stands right now or go to consumerreports.org and if you want that margaritaville grill the one you put in your car it's a four hundred dollars coming up a second hour your way of home wizard cindy dola here don't you go away we're going to talk about kitchen and bath must-haves and some fun ways to create that edible garden we're next after this